Delta 547, wind 19016, runway 22 right, clip takeoff. Runway 22 right, clip for takeoff, Delta 547. Air traffic controllers protect our nation's airways. These are the stories of real air traffic controllers to boldly deliver a safe, orderly, and expeditious flow of air traffic from their departure point to their final destination. Seven wind 19016, runway 22 right, clip takeoff. Runway 22 right, clip for takeoff, Delta 547. Can you describe for Joe and Nicole what the triple X meant? Yeah, triple, triple X in the altitude readout. It's called mode C. That's what, that, that's what they use for altitude readout. And it's very accurate. It tells us exactly what altitude they're at while they're out their flight. If you give them a descent or a climb, it changes pretty quickly as it changes. But if you give a guy a descent and, he, and the altitude shows triple X, that means that he is descending so quickly that the computer cannot keep up with it. So it just goes blank on his altitude and says, your guess is as good as mine. Oof. And the, so. In the radar environment, we have a data block and it'll have so-and-so on the call sign and it'll have the, uh, the assigned altitude like Frank was talking about there. So in this ca case, he's crossing Lemig, which is the south, right? Yeah. Crossing Lemig at one zero thousand. So 10,000 is put, or one zero zero is put in the data block. And then there's a slice on the other side of it. It shows what the altitude actually is, is or vice versa. I can't remember. It's been a while since I worked. It's either one side or the other of uh, the slash. Right. So you can say 10,000 is what he's assigned, and what is his altitude now? 15.6, 15.5, right. et cetera, et cetera. So what Frank is saying, he's got 10,000 over, he's got a slash, he's got X, X, X. It means he's going so fast, he's going descending so quickly that the computer can't catch up with it. And so that's what alerted Frank to that point. But that's, what we, that's the tool we have that you can kind of monitor what's going on. Conversely, with the, the, the fellow that's climbed or descending in the 9,000, the controller would look over there and say, well, he's got 9,000 at his assigned altitude, but he's at 13.5 or whatever that altitude was. Hey, you need to get down. So instead of giving him a crossing restriction, you just go ahead and give him a descent clearance. A crossing restriction is kind of, what do they call it again? They say uh, pilot discretion. Yeah, right. And yeah. so, you know, they're just going to float in. But if you need him down, you have to go ahead and descend him. And, and, and by the way, on initial contact at an air traffic control facility, like with a, a, an approach control facility and an approach control facility to an en route facility, they would check on and give their altitude and then you verify their mode C. Right. You know that it's accurate. You can look at your data block. Steve was telling a story about when he took the test, he prepared for the, right. the uh, uh, aptitude test that preceded the one that was in effect and, and it was a, quite a surprise. Yes. Yeah. Well, I went down to, uh, to the bookstore and they had a book that is called the Arco Study Guide. Yeah. Was this Air Traffic there? Control. Yes. 82 or 83. I've used it. No, I didn't know that. And so uh, they had an Arco Study Guide. <laughs> hmm. It didn't do any good. I mean, you went through it. And so I was learning all this stuff. I had no clue what they were talking about, you know, because, you know, I was, didn't know what a controller was. I'd been on an airplane maybe once in my life, but, uh, you know, uh, so anyway, I, I go and do the study guide. I look through it and everything. And I thought, well, that's okay. Maybe I'll get it and maybe I won't. So I go down and take the test and uh, we open it up, you know, and it starts it out and it's, uh, it's, it's like a spider web, right? If you remember, it was like a, you know, you had A, B, C, D, E, F, and they had this plane's going this way to this way to this way. Now, what's going to be the confliction, right? So the first, there were four parts of it. The first part, you know, you had X amount of time to do it, like 15 or 20 minutes to do each one to determine where the the conflictions were at, or what you needed to do to move somebody out of that confliction. The first one, I said, this is ridiculous. And it took, you know, I didn't even finish it. I didn't get all of it done. Yeah. But after that, I said, you know, okay, it's okay. I yeah. did okay on the next three. But after that, it was like the SAT test. I mean, there was that spatial reasoning you were talking about. And then the last part of it, it was, uh, it was air traffic uh, knowledge test, right? Yeah, yeah. And so they would ask you things. And, and the one on that one, they told us, that, now don't answer it. If you don't know, don't guess on these because it starts counting off. You remember that? Yeah, I do remember that. So, you know, if they go in and say, what's a Vortec? Uh, well, let's say uh, it's a Chevy, put that out in 62. <laughs> <laughs> well, you don't want to answer it that way, you yeah, know, so. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, uh, but anyway, that's, so it turned out, and I made 93, I think, on the yeah. test. Yeah. 
And I hired in Atlanta Center. That's where I started. Well, I think when you, I know uh, we were just talking about, you, we took the uh, ARCO test, Tim, did you, the, I'll call it the ARCO right, test. ARCO. Did you take that too, no, Tim? I, I, took, I took the one in 80, I, it was in 84 after the strike. Okay. My dad started a, a fight service station in 64, oh. and he was an FPL at uh, Fairbanks Tower in 66. Oh, Alaska, there you go. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so uh, I did four years in the Air Force, and then I got out, and my dad was a manager in Detroit at the time, so he was teaching, uh, he was uh, uh, having classes with the ARCO trying to get, you know, prospective controllers. Right. And uh, um, so, uh, yeah, it was. It, 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 it helped a lot of folks pass the test and get into the FA. He did a lot of, for a lot of folks. But I, I got hired in 79, and uh, uh, after tech school, I uh, was at Bi-State Parks, which is a GA airport uh, in St. Louis. Very busy back then. Yes. I remember my first day, a guy ran about 120 20 operations in an hour. I, man, I ain't going to be able to do this, you know, but <laughs> but I did. But uh, I got checked out, and then uh, I think about uh, a month before checked out, it was a strike. And uh, so I got caught up in that, got fired in the strike, and uh, went back in the Air Force, did another five, uh, 15 months out in the Abilene, the Dias. And then I went to the Philippines for four years, uh, got out again, and thanks to Bill Clinton, I got rehired in uh, uh, 97 in the Bay Area. And went to Vegas, uh, went to D.C., went to Houston for a bit, and then went back to D.C. And so you were at D.C.A. Tower? Yeah, D.C.A. Tower. Uh -huh. 